I used to love listening to the Joe Rogan Experience podcast. I listened to it on Pocket Casts. It was a fantastic experience. And if I ever wanted to watch video, that would pop up on YouTube. Now, since Joe Rogan has been acquired from Spotify, the entire experience aspect of the Joe Rogan Experience has really gotten considerably worse. And a lot of that very much stems from the fact that Spotify is trying to get the biggest amount of ROI back from the video portion of this licensing deal. Now, the Spotify platform in general, listen to podcasts is pretty mediocre. And it's something that I'm not specifically fond of. That said, uh, there's a lot that they're doing specifically for the Joe Rogan podcast that makes it worse. Now, the first thing is that they are forcing a video segment on you, even if you don't want to. And so in this example with Mark Smith, the newest uh, the newest episode, um, no matter what I do, I am forced to have this video portion of the podcast that is being displayed. Now, if I go into the settings portion of it, and I go to audio only podcasts, that means that I'm only sound, that I'm only saving the audio portion of it when I download the podcast. Now, this is specifically an issue for people with data caps and people in America where data is usually more expensive uh, because if you are only allowed to download the audio portion of it, then you are streaming the video portion of it over your internet data connection, which is not a small amount of data. What that in turn does, if you want to download it with video, now each of these video podcast portion segments is a considerable amount of data and you really have to be neurotic about automatically deleting them since there's no options to automatically download or delete podcasts in Spotify, which makes this just an absolutely horrendous experience because then what you are left up to do is manage all of this data on your device uh, to yourself. And I try to be better at it, but more often than not, I'll have a backlog of podcasts from a couple of months ago that I might have listened to, and they're still taking up data on my phone. Now, let's talk about how this affects the actual day-to-day -day listening experience for most people outside of data. Now, if you download this and you don't want to be have the, the video portion of it streaming potentially in the background, then you can go ahead and go into offline mode, and then at that point, um, it would consume less data. But in the recent updates, Spotify has removed their quick settings toggle for the options so that you can go ahead and uh, turn on and off offline mode um, separately. Now you have to go into the app and click through to do that. No doubt Spotify is doing that because they want people um, to, to not do that as often. And then on top of that, we were promised to have some type of comment section where people could have discussions in it. There's nothing like that on Spotify at the moment, which really, really sucks. And let's go over to the computer portion of it so you guys can see how this affects the computer viewing experience. Desktop side of it, because it's having to stream all this, uh, it makes the connection speed a much bigger factor here, um, a higher so than just watching it on YouTube. I'm trying to watch this video right now of some of his more recent interviews, and the experience on this is just super, super laggy. Uh, because of like the overall user interface of how this is, I'm luck with it, left with this stupid video playback bar. And right now I can't even get, okay, here we go. Uh, but just to even get to the playback scene, I'm now forced to have this video up. It's buffering, it's taking background data, pain in my butt. And I just, what if I don't wanna have this? I mean, like it, they're literally forcing this video streaming platform as part of the audio experience. And it's just not done in an elegant manner. It's not done in a, in a background manner at all. There, you see, it took two clicks for me to even pause the video. And really it's just transparent that they are trying to get the most out of their investment with Rogan as they should be. At the same time, 
it's making the experience unelegant, unintuitive, and just less user-friendly along with just ultimately less convenient. Um, and I think that if they really focused on making the, the podcast portion and podcast management portion of it a more user-friendly experience, although it may not push podcast to as many people it's going to keep podcast listeners happy and keep them from leaving the platform let me know what you guys think peace